Hey everyone, this is Aaron Moon uh, from Velocio, and I'm here to talk today a little bit about Power Automate and how we can use Power Automate to link things together uh, when we're working inside of a database. Uh, so one of the things that I, I often get asked about is, is how do we how do we use this tool to say link somebody to uh, an account that we have in our system, right? Maybe we've uh, been introduced to a new person and we want to, you know, have our system capture that information and then link them uh, into, you know, our, our, our system processes, maybe create an account for them uh, and kind of set them up on, on a journey. And so today I'm going to walk through an example of how we can use some of these tools uh, and, and try to show you, you know, some, some examples here of how you might be able to do that. So uh, we're going to jump into uh, Power Automate here. And uh, for those of you that, that haven't seen Power Automate before, it's a workflow automation tool. So it's all about um, triggering off of things that may be happening in, in your data environment and then uh, enacting actions on that data. So perhaps manipulating data, changing data, sending notifications, um, all of that is possible inside of inside of this tool. Uh, but today we want to talk about how we can uh, interact with a database. And for my example, I'm going to use the Microsoft Dataverse database. So I've got a Power Automate open here. I'm creating a new automation or a new flow as we refer to it. And I'm looking to basically choose what is my automation going to be triggered by. So I want to have this automation be triggered when I get a new uh, contact uh, added to my system. So think about that you're out there at a, at a conference, you've collected a business card, um, and, and you're entering that, that contact's information. So we want to have this automation be triggered off of that action. So I'm going to choose this Microsoft Dataverse connector here. And then we're going to select this particular trigger when a row is added, modified, or deleted. So this is going to enable our automation to be watching uh, the database and trigger something to happen uh, when something is added to this database. So I'm going to choose to have this be triggered when it's added. My table name I'm going to use is the contact table. Uh, and the scope here, I'm just going to set as organization. Uh, there's a lot of detail behind this selection, but really this is just saying, uh, is this automation going to trigger across the entire database or do I want it to be triggered just about just to, uh, on a subset of the database, maybe um, have kind of a limited scope. So uh, we're going to be uh, changing that there. That looks pretty good. I want to just uh, rename this to just say uh, when a contact is added and then as a next step what I'm going to do here uh, is I want to create an account for this person so we've captured their information and now I want to create an account for them automatically I want to have my database be triggering these actions and have these things be created so I'm going to do add a new row and you'll see that I've selected dataverse again um, and I'm going to say add a new row and this time I want to add a new account. There we go. Just took a second for that to load. Um, so now you'll see that I'm, I'm moving in this kind of linear format here where my automation is going to go step by step. So when a contact is added to my database, I now want to add a new row to into this table accounts. Uh, I need to kind of put in some default information here. You'll notice that there is a red asterisk right here that says this is required. Um, so I'm just going to use the person's full name for the name of the account. We'll throw that in right there. You'll notice that there are other uh, fields here that I can fill out like address and description, um, but I'm going to leave those blank for, for right now. So let's go ahead and uh, name my automation and we'll just say when a contact is added, create an account. Okay, so I've, I've created this automation. 
uh, and we can actually see this work now. If we um, hop over into um, an application that can actually uh, insert data into this into this database, and one application that can do that is Power Apps, and I have a Power App created over here. Uh, and so this is an application that sits on top of this um, Microsoft Dataverse database. And you'll notice that I'm in the screen here to add a new contact. So what I wanna do is I just wanna put in someone's information. Let's just say, you know, Bob Smith. This is someone I've met at a trade show. I got his business card. I wanna capture his uh, phone number Um, you know, it is email. So I've got his information in here as a new contact. And what's going to happen is that when I click save, this data is going to get saved to the database and that will actually trigger our automation. Now, before I do this, what I want to do is, uh, test my automation so that we have it waiting for this action to occur. So I'm going to say, let's set this ready to test. And if you give it just a second here, you'll see it. Okay. Now it's waiting. And so we're going to go over here and we're going to save this contact and add it to our database. So here we go. Okay. So we've saved that information. If I come back over here, we'll wait. And, uh, after a second or two, we should see this automation kick off um triggered by that contact being added to the database and there we go so uh, it ran very quickly uh, you'll see it just uh first step took less than a second the second step here of creating a new account took two seconds i can actually open this up and see all the glorious details here if i want to understand exactly what happened um, but what I can also do is I can go back over here to my, my application, which again is tied to that database. I can go over to my accounts area. And if I look here in the middle, I just have a few accounts. You'll see this is my Bob Smith account that was just created. And so, uh, it has, it has worked. It's uh, triggered when I said, Hey, I want to add this new person and it created a new account for them. Now, one of the things that uh, we're not doing right now is we're not linking these two items together. So in order to link these together, we have to add an extra step in, uh, to do that. So what I would like to do is come back into edit mode here on my automation. And I would like to set my contact as the primary contact for this account. Um, so what I want to do is I want to fill out this step right here, and this is going to actually link, uh, these two different items in the database that right now are, are both there, but they're separate. Uh, and so I'm going to link these two together and there's a little bit of syntax here, uh, to do this. And so you need to understand a couple of things you need to know, um, what the name of this, of some of the, the table names are behind the scenes. Um, so for this particular relationship here, I know the table, uh, these are pretty straightforward. It's contacts and accounts. So the format I'm going to use is I'm going to do this little black backslash, uh, and then I'm going to do the word contact. I need to do this plural and I need to make sure it's lowercase. Uh, and so there's, um, this right here is very important that you get the right name. It needs to be basically this, the schema name of this table, um, behind the scenes in, in your, in your database that you're using. Then I can do this open and close of the parenthesis. And inside of this, I want to put the ID of the contact and I can find this here in my dynamic content. If I just search for contact. And you'll see that right down here, this says unique identifier of the contact. So this is a unique ID 
uh, actually a GUID for this database um, that is, is the unique ID for this contact. And that's what we need right here. And so this really becomes the format uh, that you have to put in in order to link this contact as the primary contact on this account. Okay, so I'm gonna hit save here. And then we're gonna do this test again and um, and see how it actually links it in. And so in order to do that, um, we're gonna have to just go and create a new account and a new contact. So I'm gonna go back to my contacts area. I'm gonna add a new account. And this time we'll say, go, I'll say Smith again. And I can put in a phone number and an email, joe at email.com. Okay, let's set our automation ready to test. And now we'll save our contact. Come back over here to our automation and you'll see, there we go, it's running. First step is complete. Working on the second step. This time it took three seconds. So uh, an extra second there to make this uh, connected up. Uh, you will see here in the inputs of my flow, this is the, the details. You'll see my primary contact. So this is that syntax I was referring to where I needed the slash, the word contacts, the open and close parentheses. And then this is that unique ID that I selected in my dynamic content. So this is the actual format that it's sending through um, into the database. And if I go back over to my application and let's go over to my account list, we'll see that Joe Smith is now listed as an account. And importantly, compared to Bob, Bob does not have a primary contact. Joe does. So Joe is now listed as our primary contact for his account. And we have successfully linked those two items together. So um, this is an example here of how you can uh, use Power Automate to trigger off of uh, events happening in a database, um, create some something in that same database, or it could be in another, another area, it could have been a notification. I could send out an email that a new person has been created, a new account has been created. Um, there's just plenty, uh, tons of different things that you can do with this tool. Um, but in this particular example, we used the Microsoft Dataverse database and we linked these two items together. The last item that I wanted to call out is a question I get asked a lot, and that is, how do I undo the relating of these things together? You know, that's great. I can connect this contact to this account. Uh, but how would I go about unrelating them? And there is an action for that. So if you add a new step in here to your automation and you look at the Microsoft Dataverse connector, there are there are a lot of different options here that I recommend you look into, uh, but there is a specific one for unrelate rows. And this action will actually undo uh, that relation that we just that we just did. So you would select the table like contact and you would put in the ID of, of your contact. So let me just search for that contact unique identifier again. So this is now saying I want to unrelate this particular contact uh, from one of its relationships. And you'll see here in this drop down, this is a list of all of the other things that this contact uh, might have a relationship with in this database. And so I can select this account primary contact relationship here. And then I just need to fill out the OData ID. And this uh, is specific, again, for Dataverse, but you can see the description here uh, into the row URL using OData ID uh, from a previous step or, or fill out this particular format here. Um, so if I wanted to unrelate these, these contacts, I can do so by just searching for OData ID. That's going to pull from my add a new row step here. 
And this step right here would actually undo uh, the action that we had done in the previous where we'd linked this contact as the primary contact. So thank you for, um, for walking through this with me. Hopefully this helps you in your efforts to build out automations around the databases that you're working in. Uh, and if you're working with Dataverse, now you know that's that particular schema, that syntax uh, that you've got to put in there in order to look up and link uh, different rows together. So uh, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to me um, and, and my team here at Velocio. We'd be happy to uh, work with you on the automations that, that you're working on. So thank you very much and see you in the next one.